Did you know there's a way to slow down the aging process? Today we're talking with Dr. Anthony Bazan, a pioneer in integrative medicine who explains how hormones are part of the solution. Specifically, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy in people who have low levels can have a big impact on health and quality of life. From boosting muscle and bone strength to improving brain function, sexual function, and even immune function, balancing the hormonal system can have a big impact on how you age. In fact, a recent study shows that low levels of these hormones can even contribute to symptoms of clinical depression. Dr. Bazan will also address the latest science behind neurosteroidology and the safety considerations everyone should know. Stay tuned for this enlightening conversation. So I'm here with Dr. Anthony Bazan, Director of the Marcus Institute of Integrative Health and on faculty in the Department of Integrative Medicine and Nutritional Sciences at Thomas Jefferson University. So Dr. Bazan, I get a lot of questions from patients about bioidentical hormones, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy as a functional medicine, precision medicine, longevity medicine, integrative medicine specialist as you are. Tell us your perspective about bioidentical hormones. So, um, let's start with, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here, and it's wonderful to work with you at the Marcus Institute, at the department. Um, let's just start with the, with the ladies. Let's just start with the women. For, say, 12, 15 years of age to textbook age will be 51, 52. The ovaries about run out of eggs, or at least run out of functioning eggs, and that's what that is the biological precipitating uh, event that creates a menopause. At which point, um, biologically, the, the, the body, the brain, the whole machinery gets a message saying, well, it's time now to retire. That means that a lot of the hormonal production is now going to decline significantly. And this is what women go through when they go through menopause. So, because hormones are anabolic, and they create the body, truly, when you start running out of estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone, because women have that too, now you start beginning to witness the beginning of aging. And one of the most common uh, symptoms is the vaginal dryness, the atrophy, uh, the breasts get smaller, all these so-called uh, estrogen dependent tissues are now beginning to be less healthy. When it comes to the testosterone part, that's more in charge of the structure like the bones and the muscles. And so how many times you hear, well, you, pretty soon you start seeing people going to osteopenia. And as the years go by, they're going into osteoporosis when it's bad enough. They get sarcopenia, which is the muscle shrinking. And so, they begin to, unfortunately, suffer the effects of the loss of hormones. What does the loss of progesterone do? Progesterone is very interesting because, actually, let's, let's just clarify one thing. Historically, we have been told that these are sex hormones. Now we know that they're also sex hormones, but they are much brain hormones. So much so, brain hormones. Brain hormones. So much so that in the year 2000, a new field of science was born called neurosteroidology, which describes and studies the effect of these steroids in brain function. So when we may have their symptoms, commonly you hear, I have Alzheimer's disease and she's 51 because she cannot find the car keys and she's all scared, but it's not that these hormones are beginning to dwindle. And so the cells of the brain are not as able to communicate with each other as before. So progesterone, back to your question, when you look at the urogenital, progesterone is the hormone that allows them to have a baby. And the progesterone is also the hormone that balances out the estrogen. So when a woman is premenopausal, and she has, every month she has a period. If she doesn't fertilize and become pregnant, 
it's the play between the progesterone and the estradiol that create the period, create the thickness of the lining inside and all. Progesterone is extremely important in the menopausal phase because, in the postmenopausal phase, because in the brain, progesterone is responsible for sleeping correctly and it's an anti-anxiety hormone. So, um, and the mechanisms, the, the endocrinological, uh, endocrinological mechanism of that are pretty well known. So one of the things that women come in complain all the time when they get at that level in their life is, I have insomnia, I can't sleep anymore, and I'm anxious, and I don't even know why. And that's often the progesterone. And it's the progesterone deficiency that causes that. So if a woman comes into us and she is going to go now on estrogen therapy and has a uterus, she is absolutely mandatorily going to be on both hormones in order to protect the uterus from bleeding and possibly of cancer. But we will inform her as well that when she starts taking the progesterone, she will love it in a way because now she's going to start sleeping again like when she was younger. And then that anxiety that she has, which is probably 80 to 90 percent of my patients have that symptom, will resolve. So why the need for bioidentical hormone replacement if this is sort of a natural process that occurs? It's the nature of the human animal. Can we do something better? Can we improve our life? Can we improve our condition? And so um, people are saying, well, you know, I understand that, but I'm getting older. Um, my quality of life is going away. Can I do something about it? The beginning of the year, 1900, I think the American lifespan was 50 years. 50 years. Yeah. Now we are talking, for women, 82, 84. So now you have a, a, a woman who goes into menopause at 50 and has possibly 40 years of life in front of her. And that's why this is attractive to women. And this is why we do it. Because we can soften, if you want to call it, you can soften the blow. And because of the anabolic properties of these hormones, we can diminish the effect of aging on the entire body. Keep the muscles, keep the bones, don't go into osteoporosis, keep brain function, and, and a quality of life. In a recent um, study that I read about cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease, Alzheimer's prevention, the topic of these hormones has come up. What are your thoughts about that? I've looked at that for, for a while, and I think that my, between my reading of the literature and my experience with my patients, I've come to this conclusion. If you see a study that shows that estrogens were used for cognition or mental issues, and the patients got worse, that is because they were using hormones that weren't human and they were pro-inflammatory. If you see the study and they say that by using the estrogens, the mentation got better, it's because they use the bioidentical hormones, which are not inflammatory and are a match for what that b b brain was built to use. Are these hormones anti-inflammatory? They can be. They can be. The inflammatory state of the body is also influencing these hormones. And also, um, diet can do that. For instance, uh, based on animal diets, uh, many times what, what happens is that estrogen can have very different versions. We call these versions metabolites. There are three main estrogens that a woman makes, but those become many more inside the body. Complicated biochemistry. Uh, the message, though, is that some of those hormones are safe, and anti-inflammatory. Some of those versions are the opposite. They're pro-inflammatory and cancer makers. So um, it is crucial that you know people understand that because based on their diet, they are able to then guide. Uh, suppose then they come and we give them the hormones. If they know how to treat their body, they will keep the hormones in the version that we like without having a problem. What about bioidentical hormones for men? That is usually just one. <laughs> the, the, the testosterone. Testosterone for us. Um, 
is um, pretty much everything. So the rule of hormones here is you do not give them if they're not needed. So once you make a diagnosis and you have clear a situation in which there is hormone deficiency, um, testosterone is, I, I tell people testosterone is like building a home. Every time you go by, one week later, there's more home being built. And that's what it does, because it's profoundly anabolic. Um, and also, it's an, it's an anti-inflammatory. In the brain, it's an antidepressant. As progesterone is an anti-anxiety, testosterone is an antidepressant. It's a motivator. You know, people who have low testosterone are looking at life like, my life is in the past. People who get it back, they, they say, oh, wow. I can get a new job, I can get a new home, you know, I can do that. And also, low testosterone creates difficulty in dealing with stress. So men with low testosterone, everything is kind of hard. They fly off the handle, everything is a big issue, of business problem. When you normalize it, things calm down. When do testosterone levels in men start to go down, usually? About middle age. Mm -hmm. Although, I have to tell you, unfortunately, the age of men that come to me with this testosterone deficiency is getting younger and younger and younger. Why do you think that is? Diet, stress, uh, pollutants, drugs. Is there anybody who should not get bioidentical hormones? So, yes. In other words, if there is history of cancer, if there is history of... Um, depends on how you do it as well. Um, you know, we take a lot of uh, factors into consideration. We deliver the hormones so that they are not going to increase clotting factors. We know that, um, for instance, if you take certain hormones by mouth, they have to go through the liver, and that's where the clotting factors are made. So that could potentially amplify the production of clotting factors, and if you couple that with... So like when a woman takes a birth control pill? Yes. If you couple that with maybe overweight, inflammation, smoking, now you're walking down a very dangerous path. Um, usually, we like to avoid what we call first pass, and so we deliver it by patch, or cream, or injections, or pellets. There are ways we, have, we do that in order to avoid the answer is, for men, it is now generally accepted in the scientific community that testosterone will not give you prostate cancer. But what if you already have it and you don't know? This is where you know, doctors need to be careful in selecting the patients, doing their due diligence, and making sure that you know, when you treat someone, uh, first do no harm. Thank you for uh, speaking with me about this, Dr. Bizdan. I always learn something from talking to you. My pleasure, thank you. Wow, what an eye-opening conversation with Dr. Anthony Bazan. We'll be covering more exciting topics like this in upcoming shows. I'm Dr. Dan Monti. Until next time, be well.